Howdy folks, Bill Gailey, back in the Mad Scientist Lab and getting ready to go through some of these uh, projects in Craig Anderton's book, Electronic Projects for Musicians. And this video is for project number one, the preamp. Let's get to it. Before I get started working on all of these projects, I guess I should mention a few things about what I am going to do, what I'm going to cover, and what I'm not going to cover. I mentioned in a previous video, this thing was last published, this edition at least, this was uh, published in 1980. So there's a, there's a good number of things that have changed. So anyway, in the, in the first part of the book, it goes over, you know, what things look like, what they do, how to solder things like that, which is great information if you've never worked with electronics before. I'm not going to cover that stuff and just, you know, assume that you know what a, you know, voltmeter is, but you know what a soldering iron is. This is hot. Don't burn yourself. That kind of stuff. Common sense. He goes into some pretty cool stuff about how to prototype these things. Back in 1980, I did this too, but, you know, you'd get a big copper slab and you would, uh, you know, put the, the etch resist on there and then you would soak it in ferrous chloride and stink up the house and then you'd have a circuit board. That's great, but um, I'm lazy and I have access to the internet. I can draw these things out online, click, make it for me and send it to my door and then lo and behold, 10 days later, there it is and the things look beautiful. So skipping ahead, going straight to project number one, which is the preamp. And I gotta admit, I love the way that he did this. He used a, a vector format, not the graphic vector format, like vector graphics that we have on the internet. Vector more like um, they, there were these big rack mounted kind of systems and you would slide in different cards, different devices vertically like that and you would have a back plane that they would all plug into. So depending on which ones you would put in this vector rack, it would all work together. And it's clever that he did this making a bunch of guitar effects, you know. All right. Uh, so for all of the projects, he does a good job of laying out, you know, the instructions about um, what the thing is going to do, the theory behind it. Also gives you some uh, debugging kind of information that if it doesn't work, uh, or if you want it to behave a little bit differently, if it's, you know, overloading, trade this part out. And, you know, great advice, especially for somebody like me back in the early days when I really didn't know what these things were doing. Anyway, it's a good learning tool. Yeah, this was cool. He actually gave you the, um, the, the trace that, you know, should you want to etch your own uh, circuit board there. Yeah, there you go. There's your traces and, you know, the silk screen side. Um, be a little bit like more labor intensive, um, you know, but hey, if you're, if you're totally DIY and you want to go for that, great. Not me. I have access to the internet. All right, to me, the most important thing is the schematic and the parts list on the opposite page. So pretty much going through here, it's, it's a pretty standard uh, op amp circuit. And he's got these two LEDs up here that uh, he can switch in, add to the circuit, and it gives it kind of a fuzz tone. So he's got a balanced output here, and unbalanced out. He's got a, a VU meter output there, which he didn't put on the project in the book, but I've got a couple of these antique things. You can see the needle kind of move around there. Anyway, so I could use something like this as a VU um, meter have another project over here that I made a while ago you know and I thought it would be really cool to have an amplifier with a decibel meter on it actually all this thing is it's very similar to the, the other one that I showed it's uh, 
it's basically a coil that registers voltage from zero to six volts. So I could use that as a as a VU uh, voltmeter on the on the circuit ultimately, or I could just use it as an option and use that that plug. I may do that. Hmm, okay. All right. So the big issue with with these older circuits is that these are dual op amps and I can't find these parts. Uh, you know, the resistors and the capacitors, these are all standard values and I can just, you know, pull these out of my parts boxes. Uh, so that's not an issue. Uh, it calls for some uh, pretty standard like signal diodes. So that's for like, you know, preventing reverse polarity um, voltage to the thing so it protects the circuit and doesn't burn out. Uh, there's the red LEDs that it asks for. That's for the for the clipping to give it that little distortion sound. And the dual op amps are uh, RC4739 or an XR4739 dual low noise op amp. And in the course of looking around, I found the pinout for for these online. It's a, it's a 14 pin. Let's see, so we've got a positive power supply there. We've got the negative or the ground out there in that bottom pin. And then we have one op amp operating on these pins, inverting input, non-inverting input, unused, 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 and an output. And on the other side, similar kind of layout, inverting, non-inverting, three unused and an output. I think um, just just an idea that these unused pins they might be serving as a heat sink. It, amplifiers generate heat you know um, if, if you're a guitarist and you had an amp and you crank the volume you know you're you're pumping out a lot of waste heat um, as a product of amplifying the electrical signal. Yeah. It's just part of it. So anyway, I suspect that's what those are. Those are like heat sinks just to vent off. So I can't find this and I'm not too worried about it. If I had an existing circuit and I needed to replace one of these, I would look a little bit harder or I would find uh, like some things I've, I've found online that use more modern dual op amps and then they they put that chip on top of a circuit board and then the circuit board itself has the 14 pins as a direct replacement. So it's an option, but uh, not for me. Anyway, I have a whole bunch of these LM358. It's nothing really fancy. I got them because they were cheap. They have a similar kind of setup. Positive power supply, negative or ground, and we have a non-inverting input, inverting input, output, and same on the other side, non-inverting, inverting, output. It's like the exact opposite of those. But the advantage is that modern dual op amps like this, you can pretty much take one out, put another one in. As long as it has that same pin out, you're good to go. You can try out different flavors because what they're going to have different gain characteristics, they're going to have a different slew rate, um, uh, or they might have less noise. Anyway, I'm using these because they're cheap and I've got a hundred of them. All right, so now then, I'm going to get my parts together and see about prototyping this guy. Back in a flash. Okay, well, I've got uh, part, enough of part of Project 1 uh, on the proto board here. Um, what I've basically done is take it from the input uh, through these filter caps into this op amp. I left off the test probe because it doesn't do anything. And that's just the power rail there. So yeah, this is basically really just uh, input buffer 
and it capacitively couples to a gain knob uh, through a 4.7K resistor into the inverting input. The non-inverting just goes to ground. Let's see, output. Let's see, it loops around to a 470K. So 4.7 4 and 470, that's 100 times gain. Plenty of gain. And we've got a 5 picofarad um, capacitor there. We've got these two diodes which get put in by a switch. And then that's capacitively coupled out to a volume knob that I didn't use <laughs> and straight on to the output. All right. So on the proto board, Take a look at this. See, this is uh, my input. Uh, power goes into here, feeds the whole board with 9 volts. Oh goodness, that's the output that goes to the amp that you hear buzzing down below. Goodness. Alright, so signal comes in and we have it go through this side of the op amp. That's just the buffer. And then it capacitively couples over to this side. And here's this resistor network with... I just have two plain diodes there. Because I, I tried using these LEDs. And it basically... I really had to drive this thing hard in order to start getting some clipping with these guys. These clip at a much lower voltage. Let's see, and then we capacitively couple to the output, and then out it goes. So, power, input, this is the switch to put the diodes in, that's the output, and that's the gain knob. So, it's enough of the circuit to test what it sounds like. It actually sounds pretty good. The gain is still working here. Whoa! That's crazy. Notice when I get it right about three quarters of the way up. It's just a little bit of extra dirt in there. Almost all the way up. I took just a hair off. <laughs> Sounds all right. Put the gain back down. Now, when I turn the switch on for the diodes, notice it might sound a little quieter. Oops. Project number one on the proto board, it's got a couple of glitchy stuff going on here because this stuff is old and it's yucky. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna might tweak this a little bit more and see if I can get it to be a little bit more even because as it is, when the diodes kick in, it takes just a little bit out of, out of the head rim there. 